Let's talk about seafloor spreading theory. The question as to how the drifting took place left the continental drift theory blurry. Despite the evidences presented by Wegener, his idea that the continents were once joined together was not accepted by the scientific society until the 1960s. He was not able to explain how this drifting took place. This made scientists conduct further studies in search for the answer. During the 1960s, new techniques and modern gadgets enabled scientists to make better observations and gather new information about the ocean floor. With the use of sonars and submersibles, scientists had a clearer view of the ocean floors. They have discovered underwater features deep within the ocean. Scientists found a system of ridges or mountains in the seafloor similar to those found in the continents. These are called mid-ocean ridges. One of these is the famous Mid-Atlantic Ridge, an undersea mountain chain in the Atlantic Ocean. It is a gigantic cleft about 32 to 48 kilometers long and 1.6 kilometers deep. The ridge is offset by fracture zones or rift valleys. In the early 1960s, scientist Harry Hess, together with Robert Dietz, suggested an explanation to the continental drift. This is called the seafloor spreading theory. According to this theory, hot, less dense material from below the Earth's crust rises towards the surface at the mid-ocean ridge. This material flows sideways carrying the seafloor away from the ridge and creates a crack in the crust. The magma flows out of the crack, cools down, and becomes the new seafloor. Over time, the new oceanic crust pushed the old oceanic crust far from the ridge. The process of seafloor spreading allowed the creation of new bodies of water. For example, the Red Sea was created as the African plate and the Arabian plate move away from each other. Seafloor spreading is also pulling the continents of Australia, South America, and Antarctica away from each other in the East Pacific Rise. The East Pacific Rise is one of the most active sites of seafloor spreading with more than 14 centimeters every year. In the place where two oceanic plates collide, or where an oceanic plate and a continental plate collide, a subduction zone occurs. As the new seafloor is formed at the mid-ocean ridge, the old seafloor farthest from the ridge is destroyed at the subduction zone. The rate of formation of a new seafloor is not always as fast as the destruction of the old seafloor at the subduction zone. This explains why the Pacific Ocean is getting smaller and why the Atlantic Ocean is getting wider. These are the findings that support seafloor spreading theory. Rocks are younger at the mid-ocean ridge. Rocks far from the mid-ocean ridge are older. Sediments are thinner at the ridge. Rocks at the ocean floor are younger than those at the continents. The seafloor spreading theory contradicts a part of the continental drift theory. According to continental drift theory, continents move through unmoving oceans and the larger, sturdier continents broke through the oceanic crust, whereas the seafloor spreading shows that the ocean is the actual site of tectonic activity. Seafloor spreading was strengthened with the discovery that the magnetic rocks near the ridge follow a pattern aside from the fact that rocks near the ridge are remarkably younger than those farther from the ridge. A magnetic compass tells us directions on Earth. It also proves that the Earth has a magnetic field. The needle of the magnetic compass usually points to the North Pole of the Earth, which is actually the South Magnetic Pole at present. The Earth's magnetic field is generated in a very hot molten outer core and has already existed since the birth of our planet. The Earth's magnetic field is a dipole, which means one that has a North Pole and a South Pole. What is a magnetic reversal? How does magnetic reversal happen 
And how does it prove seafloor spreading? Magnetic reversal is also called magnetic flip of the Earth. It happens when the North Pole is transformed into a South Pole and the South Pole becomes the North Pole. This is due to the change in the direction of flow in the outer core. Magnetic reversals happen many times in the past. The occurrence of magnetic reversals can be explained through the magnetic patterns in the magnetic rocks, especially those found in the ocean floor. When lava solidifies, iron-bearing minerals crystallize. As this crystallize, the minerals behave like tiny compasses and align with the Earth's magnetic field. So when magnetic reversal occurs, there is also a change in the polarity of the rocks. This allowed scientists to visualize the magnetic stripes in the ocean floor. Over the last 10 million years, there has been an average of 4 to 5 reversals per million years. New rocks are added to the ocean floor at the ridge with approximately equal amounts on both sides of the oceanic ridge. The stripes on both sides are of equal size and polarity which seem to be mirror images across the ocean ridge. It indicates that indeed the seafloor is spreading. Thank you for listening my dear students. Wait for my next video on convection current. Yes.